Welcome to another NBA Academy podcast. I'm Big Italy 42 here talking about NBA advanced statistics for your strategy here. And I'm going to highlight a couple important statistics that maybe you aren't aware of, maybe you don't utilize, maybe you don't know how to utilize. And then um, I'm going to give you explanations and then tell you how to use them. So starting off here, you want to find as much of an edge as you can, as you obviously know in every single sport. First off, usage percentage, usage rate, whatever you want to call it. It's defined by basketball reference as an estimate of the percentage of team plays used by a player while he's on the floor. We've got the formula down here. Certainly, you've got to be happy you don't won't ever actually have to calculate these numbers because it's a really complex formula, but also a little bit subjective. Depending on sites, StatMuse, NBA Wowie, you can find people that uh, have a little bit different of usage rate numbers for people, for NBA players, but usually within 1% to 2%, nothing substantial there. It gives you a good idea of how often a player is involved in the offense. For instance, Russell Westbrook led the entire NBA with 38.4% last year. He was the most utilized player in any offense in the NBA. Um, some of that due to the fact there was injuries to Kevin Durant. He had to take on the load. Um, generally, a player with a usage rate over 20% is one that you can count on to be heavily involved. Each player in the top 10 of usage last season had a usage rate of at least 26.9%. That one belonged to Damian Lillard. So... Numbers like that just kind of gives you a little bit of a, an idea of what a big usage rate is and the ones you want to target. And if you know which players are heavily involved, you can target them with confidence knowing they'll see opportunities to rack up fantasy points. And also, injuries have a significant impact on usage percentage as well. So great way to do that. Go to NBA Wally and check it out. Um, you can search with one player on the floor, with one player out, with two on, two off, whatever you want to do. Find out who gets the biggest bump. And p- players, sometimes you think will get a bump that really don't see much extra action due to an injury. So important to check that out as well. Defense versus position. Obviously, it's important. Team defense as well. But defense versus position is how many fantasy points a team allows to a specific position. You can use these numbers to find your values, elite matchups, and, you know, also players that you may not have been wanting to play, players that you may not just think are even very good, but in a phenomenal matchup, sometimes provide you with some nice value there. And it's important to take into account each site's scoring, FanDuel and DraftKings are slightly different. You've got three-pointers, bone, three-point bonus on DraftKings. You've got double-double, triple-double bonuses, slightly different numbers for rebounds there as well. So knowing which site numbers are for when you find these defense versus position numbers is very important. Individual matchups will determine a lot, but like I said, you need to take into account the team defense as well. Lakers are the worst team in the NBA last year, depending on the point guard position, so it's very important to... Know things like this. These aren't things that you're necessarily going to have to look up every day. Once you know, you know, X team struggles against big men, team struggles against point guards, things of that nature, you, you can keep, kind of keep that in the back of your mind and save yourself some time on research moving forward. But definitely want to take into account great matchups, teams that struggle against the position, and take advantage of that wherever you can. Next up is pace. Important statistic there. The formula for calculating pace here is below. Also, the Simply, the simple way to say it is pace is the estimated number of possessions per 48 minutes or full game that each team has. A team with a higher pace is one that pushes the tempo, obviously leading to more scoring opportunities on offense, but rebounds, assists, block shots, steals. Slower pace likes to slow as a team that likes to slow it down and play a half court game. So targeting players who play up in pace is very important. More possessions equal more opportunities to meet and exceed the value threshold. So teams that have uh, play at low pace. Usually not teams that you want to target, especially in your cash games. Consistency is a little bit subjective, but it's important as well. You want to, especially in your cash games, you want to take into account a player's salary, determine their consistency. Some some players are overpriced, some players are underpriced. When you know about what you can expect out of a a player, maybe X player takes 15 to 18 shots a game, you know, 5 to 6 rebounds, whatever it may be, you want to make sure you have a high floor with your players as much as possible. So, you can use our projections at dailyfantasycafe.com to see how much um, players projected to score, what they scored before, what they've done in similar matchups. Obviously, a good thing about NBA, you're going to see a lot of teams playing the same team multiple times. So good to uh, get a good idea of uh, a team's usage, their strategy against a specific team and things like that. Obviously, the ones that can reach or exceed value are the players you want in your cash game lineup. And it's when you say high floor, it's not necessarily a, t- a player that scores a lot of actual points. Players that can um, put up points in a myriad of ways, rebounds, assists, things like that. A player like Trevor Reza is perfect for your cash games because you don't have to rely on their scoring either. So 
when you can find a player that has potential to return five or six X on value, those are the ones you can make um, your elite GPP plays and guys that you can even sell into your cash games at times as well. So these are important statistics. Take some time, look into these, see what you can do with your research. NBA season this year is going to be a lot of fun. And anytime you can find yourself a little bit of an edge or a new statistic maybe you weren't using, certainly going to help you out moving forward. So if you've got any questions, you can find me at BigEvilly42. We are on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We've got lots of other great content for every other sport at DailyFantasyCafe.com.